Well, bless the Lord, everybody. Everybody bless the Lord. Praise God. Good to be here one more time to share the gospel of Christ with you and to encourage your most holy faith in the Lord. Amen. Ready for another round in the word. Hallelujah. Spiritual food to the soul and to the spirit man and bringing us in the fullness as true children of God. And that's what we feed on to partake of the nature and of the character and the presence of God. His word. Amen. Because none can come to the Father but through him. Amen. Praise God. Come on, just lift those hands to the Lord. Let's just acknowledge our Heavenly Father. Father, I thank you for another occasion for us to be here. We are here because we believe the importance of your word, the importance of being here, the importance of gathering, the importance of connecting with your word. We know you said it. That in the last days perilous times will come. Men will become lovers of themselves and of money and of other things that are contrary and but to what you have purpose for them. And in fact will be drawn away to all manner of uncleanness. But you are calling us as your people to be separate and to embrace your word. And let your word be food to our soul to bring us into the full nature and operation as true children of God. And we know we cannot do this of ourselves and that's why you have set up this system these principles that through the preaching of the word those who believe will be saved and so you said faith comes by hearing and hearing your word but they said how can they hear without a preach and how can they be a preacher if there's not one cent and so we are here to declare your word hallelujah and thankful to you that your holy spirit is present to lead us into all truth and to grant us greater ability to receive the fullness of your word, O oh God. Greater capacity to receive more and greater knowledge and wisdom, O oh God, to embrace his teachings and to apply them effectively in our lives. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Praise him. Hallelujah. All right, we're here to get into the word and that's what we are here to do amen praise god we are still declaring the gospel of the of the kingdom and we know this is the gospel that jesus preached and all so the bible it has been tailored but more so exposed and unveiled through jesus christ in his coming and even greater ways in his return amen and so we want persons to pay attention to the message pay attention we keep on um embracing encouraging persons to do so because we know there is a slick devil hallelujah that is aiming to keep every person otherwise occupied and otherwise minded but not mindful about this word and we know this word will determine your status your future and your stay with the lord this word about the kingdom Hallelujah. And he did, Jesus, in fact, did say it to his disciples. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 13, they asked him, why then did he speak to them, the multitude, in parables? And he explained to them, hallelujah, that the mysteries of the parables, the mystery of the kingdom, is for those who truly are being discipled by him. Now, not everybody is being discipled by him. Some will even disciple himself. And said, they want to know God himself. But God has appointed persons to disciple us. Amen. And we need to embrace the ones who God has sent. And embrace the grace on their life. To come into the fullness of what God has purposed for us. Huh? And Jesus said it in Matthew chapter 13. From verse 10 he says. The disciples came and said to him. Why do you speak to them in parables? The scripture did tell us that everything every time the lord spoke on the gospel of the kingdom he spoke in parables but the disciples identified it was in parables to them and not necessarily to them the disciples but to those who were there just there for the for being present and want to see miracles and want to get something from jesus but not really there to be discipled and this is the great commission god has sent out the disciples to disciple nations hallelujah and so we know that in this word this word of the kingdom hallelujah as it is called as jesus called it the word of the kingdom he says it is spoken as mystery 
uh, uh, to, to those who hear it because those who hear it as mystery really don't understand it and because they don't understand it they cannot bear any fruit from it and Jesus spoke about this the disciples knew once they did, those people did not understand it they, it couldn't be useful to them that's why they were concerned in asking Jesus why do you speak to them not to us to them in parables and he answered and said to them because it has been given to you you who to you my disciples because he is discipling them he says it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven the mysteries there mean hidden truths there are truths that are there not that it is not that it is, it is it is hidden from persons from seeing it but not from persons who just want to take a scan glance at it will not see it it's for persons who truly desire to know it amen and it says these disciples truly desire to know that's why they have come to be discipled by jesus because they want to know and they believe what he's teaching them will truly transform their lives amen and so they come to him to hear this word and he says it is for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of him but to them it has not been given and he gives a very serious caution here of what will really happen to those who don't it has not really been given to i don't really understand it he says for whoever has to him more will be given speaking about the mysteries of the kingdom he says whoever has it will more be given and he will have what abundance but whoever does not have even what he has will be what taken from him that is serious for anyone who think this message is not that necessary and they think they got it part and they're good by themselves they need to pay attention to what jesus said right there he says anyone who doesn't know the hidden truths of this gospel hallelujah anyone who truly don't understand it hallelujah he says even what he has will be what take now away from but even those who understand he says more will be given and it will abound even unto abundance amen hallelujah so we know that he said that and he said therefore i speak to them in parables and he tells the disciples why he do it because that's why they ask why and he says because seeing they do not see they have eyes to see but they're not seeing here they have ears to hear but they are not hearing nor do they understand in other words he's saying they don't have an ear for this they are not truly looking into the message that is being declared they don't have any interest in the gospel of the kingdom come on hallelujah many people are just just um interested in what they can get but they're not truly interested in about this operation and he says if they really want to know about the operation then you're preparing yourself as ears for the kingdom but if you don't want to know the operation and you just want to get the benefits you are just here as a wagonist you're basically there just to get the benefits but you don't really want to know have the know how to to really partner with him in the governance of it and so how you're going to be an ear if you don't know come on so he says therefore i speak to them in purpose he's not to his disciples in purpose it's to them because he says because seeing they seen but they're not seen they say seeing they do not see in other words they have eyes but they're not looking into this they have ears to hear but they're not paying attention they're not giving it any keen ear to what they're hearing nor do they understand and he says and in them the prophecy of isaiah is fulfilled which says what hearing you will hear and shall not understand seeing you will see and not perceive come on and he tells them why for the hearts of these people have what grown dull they have not they have lost any interest to all that teaching many still don't follow up much on what jesus teach they just want the miracles when they sick they want to be healed when they're in lack they want provision when they are, are struggling with issues they want good success and that's what they call on jesus for 
they don't really want to partner with him in his business which is really about the kingdom come on so he says for the hearts of these people have grown dull they have grown dull you know somebody lose interest right he said their hearts have grown dull their ears are hard of hearing in other words when you're not commanding the attention of someone when you're speaking you say the people would say you're hard of hearing when parents say we talk to you but you're not hearing you're not listening to me they say you're hard of hearing in other words you're not attentive to what they're saying now are taking to heart what you're hearing that's what he called hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed in other words they are not mindful to look or to pay attention to what is demonstrating and showing them he says lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so i should heal them you know the lord is ready to heal them but they don't desire this healing they don't even see the need for it when people are feeling quite all right they don't see the need for salvation you know salvation is a person that is that that sense the predicament they are in and realize that they really need serious help anytime people feel fine and safe they don't find the message very appealing because it's, it's like safe from what i mean you know jesus had some discussion with some jews who believed him in that when he was telling them to set them free who the son set free i believe it's in john 8 verse 30 to 36 he says who the son said but, but they didn't believe they were in slavery so it's like what you tell him what set free make free from what and we're not we are children of abraham and we're not slave to anyone so you're going to make us free. <laughs> you see it only attracts to those who see the need come on and, and unfortunately many don't see the need for this word they just want the benefits they don't see the need to really understand it that he can practically apply and get bear much fruit and see the evidence of how this thing works in their life some person is not interested how things work how things operate and they just want to get the end result so in other words you'd have to keep on fishing for them for every say like because they'll never learn to fish <laughs> come on but but the lord is saying you can learn this come on now you can learn this yeah huh? the kingdom is about the governance of god and he said if you learn the word of the kingdom you will in fact learn to govern with him and all the things you'll be able to judge using his judgment through the word and apply and gain successful and eternal results oh my god but they don't see that we say lest they should turn <laughs> the devil is really keeping them preoccupied lest they should what they should understand with their hearts and turn so that i should heal them but blessed he says to his disciples blessed are your eyes huh for they see and your ears why for they hear for he says as surely i say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see in other words there are persons before that were serving the lord that desire to hear this level of teaching and to see this level of demonstration of the kingdom and did not see it in the night because they were living immoral but it says the fullness of time had not come for these things to be revealed in the fullness of time when the son came he came with that wealth of revelation and he says then he coming with that wealth of revelation those who are here now should be overjoyed that finally what our forefathers were godly men and women and prophets that were seeking after and crying out to god for is finally here among us no he said no they are dull their ears lack of hearing they have no much attention to it they have no much interest for it they, they, they are like babies who sit down and want your spoon feed them and put it in their mouth do the food right in the lap and still they're showing some annoyance at the tears of what they get in their mouth so he said those who live that way said they will lose it all come on 
They might think they're safe, but they will lose it all. Come on. Huh? Because he says, but blessed are your eyes to his disciples, for they, for, for, for his, your eyes see. You see and you hear. They did not see and they did not hear, but you see. Huh? And you hear. And what is that saying to you? It makes you more accountable. Hallelujah. Those to whom much is given, much is required. Come on. So you cannot just kick back and try to live by old and be as David and, 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 the, and, and, and Samson and, and Elijah and Elisha. You need to understand that greater than all those patriarchs are here who have demonstrated greater level of wisdom and faith and knowledge to the body of Christ. Hello. And that comes through Christ himself. So the Lord spoke about that. Yes, many in former times angels and 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 prophets spoke to many in times past that's in hebrews 1 verse 1 and 2 in times past he said god spoke to them showed that everybody says in these last days huh in these last days he has what spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed here of all things so it says he has appointed the son here of all things and he said if you listen to the ear you will become an ear <laughs> come on he said that's what he's training you for come on now he said but you must listen intently with your heart and with your ears and truly look intently look into what he's showing you that you can have mastery and and have full understanding of what is declaring to you and have full application in your life and reap the full results huh my god what no sir sometimes we wonder who we're talking to because many is word of god says many have will not endure sound doctrine they have lost the taste for it they have Create, developed other appetites huh yeah man they have developed other appetites for other things other things make the heart race and, and drilling and rush and get them excited and capture the attention but when you start to talk about the kingdom and the word of god yeah 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 <laughs> so the lord said yes yeah man they, they they will surely lose it all God, there is a thief there is a deceiver there is a devourer that is waiting to destroy those who don't understand this word hello somebody but paul tell timothy preach the word what be be ready in season and out of season convince rebuke exhort with all what why is the long suffering? He said, you have to go bear with all the attitude and the response they're going sure like you can't don't know. You can't give it a break. Come on now. That's why he says, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. In other words, he said, you may teach it already, but teach it again. Go deeper. And I mean, say, in other words, what they might count as unnecessary information, you keep declaring it. <laughs> For he said, the time will come and they will not endure what? Sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. Come on. In other words, they, they desire other things. And he said, it's according to their own desires, not other people's desires. Is their own because they have itchy ears. Ah, come on. They will heap up for themselves teachers. They will start to drift to others that saying what they want to hear. Huh? Yes, man, everybody know what they want to hear, you know. You think they don't know? They really know. And sometimes you can tell from when they hear certain conversations come up your the, 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 their voice 
go up to a higher pitch and they don't lack words for talk and they don't want done and they get very excited but when they come to this word eh, eh, then they wonder why their life is like that we know why their life is like that they bear no much interest in god's business they have been captivated with the things of the world and with the people of the world come on and he says they will turn their ears away from the truth eventually if something become annoying and not tasteful to you your ears will turn to what your sense is tasteful because though your ears is hearing and not tasting he says there there's a tendency for you to gravitate to what your heart is panting for and so that will capture your attention so he said their ears will turn away from the truth and be turned aside to what fables come on but but what he said to timothy but you timothy be watchful in all things and endure affliction do the work of an evangelist fulfill the ministry come on so that's why we say this year now don't have me to do the crusade whether they have your money or not praise god may they run it become he say may they do the work if they're not interested to bring in anybody and get anybody and take the work serious we will call for others because others all they want to hear it for them belly full praise god so paul tell timothy say you do the work if they want to turn aside they clear some more we come in what really want to stick to this do the work of an evangelist come on the thing we are doing this just out of my mind and just some mental thought is studying and following the word and the holy spirit leading to bring forth his full course in this house whether people will return that it's going to be done hello somebody so that's why he says what they said they will turn aside to fables that's the very thing paul was writing about in second thessalonians where he said that i mean a strong delusion will come upon them why because there's no love of the truth what is that second thessalonians 2 praise god he said because the love of the truth is not in them many say we love the truth i ah, will love the truth man no man because we love the truth the seven but you notice that the truth no longer has that registry in their spirit anymore it sounds to them like fables yes we can remember some fables and even recited it who's speaking it but does your heart really believe it and when your heart is in it my god there's a different level of conviction not true Oh, so it to, right so it says there in second thessalonians for i'll talk about it say the coming of the lawless one is according to what the working of satan with all what power and signs and what lying wonders with all what unrighteous deception among who those who perish because what they did not receive now many will say they are not among those who perish you know, but they have still not received the love of the truth they will say they love the truth but their response to the truth and to the word has diminished it is depleting it is fading away hello come on and the more the attention and the desire for the word fades the more the word become distasteful to them is no longer drawing them having that pull on them come on because the desire is weaning is going away huh they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved come on give me more there and for this reason huh, what reason they, they did not receive the love of the truth for this reason he says god will send them he, he, he said the devil will he said god will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that they all may be condemned who did not what 
believe the truth but at pleasure come on now anything that is not right but no matter how you try to justify it it is unrighteousness huh? anything that is against God's order description and prescription of what is right is unrighteous and the word of God says those who know God they know that those who know God must practice what righteousness come on now because anyone not practicing righteousness we know they are not of God come on somebody hello oh John said that you know <laughs> John said that <laughs> in 1st John 3 verse 7 he says little children let no one deceive you he who what practice righteousness is righteous just as who as he the Lord is righteous come on now hello and even in 1st John 2 in 1st John 2 verse 28 and 29 he says now little children abide in him huh? abide in him that what when he appears we may have what confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming come on why should we be ashamed in other words says after we labor and excavate so much word and mysteries of the kingdom to you for we to stand up and still see so you're disqualified you don't make it in other words our labor and you was in vain paul often time talk about that to the saints that their labor will not be in vain it's not that his soul will be lost because they are so lost but he says we we didn't do all that work for your soul to be lost come on so when if we do all that work and your soul be lost do we feel his soul no lost we still feel shame say we did all that work and now come out no good for you come on that's what he says when he appears we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming if you know that he's righteous john said if you know that he's righteous you know that everyone who practice righteousness is what born of so if you're practicing someone all right is unjust it's not according to those who are being discipled by Christ. Don't act that way. And you still continue to do it and say, Well, God understand how that work out. Come on. Now. Hello. So so we know the, 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 the gospel of the kingdom is calling for those who truly need to and see the need to understand the principles of the kingdom. Hello because the kingdom is for those who are truly doing the will of god and are practicing righteousness because they know the the, the belief in the promises of god puts them into what preparation mode huh the belief in the promise of god does what yes man praise god that that's in for second peter two second peter one yes second peter one from verse 5 hallelujah from verse 5 to verse 9 praise god hallelujah it says for this very reason giving all diligence peter says what he says should do add to your faith what virtue and unto virtue what knowledge so say you may have some goodness since the goodness of the lord flowing through you to desire and to do things that are good but he say if you have desire to do things that are good without knowledge it still puts you in a hard position come on and if you have knowledge and don't have self-control you still will become unstable and if you have self-control but lack perseverance you see the addition of this end here you still will come up short and something because you don't have what it takes to go to the end and if you have perseverance but you're not backing that perseverance that determination and and push with godly behavior what he call godliness 
then he says you 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 still will come behind in all your push forward in all your persevere you still will be persevering much in the flesh you get it and so he says yes you're doing that with godliness but remember the brotherly kindness don't get any say yes you're behaving godly that you start to forget your god brothers <laughs> and be thoughtful about their well-being and not just yours come on and he says in doing that then you must add to it love remember the love the lord showed to you that you can show it to others and he said if you do these things you know what he says in verse 8 if these things are yours huh if these things are what yours and abound me say it increase hallelujah and remain in you it remain and increase he says you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge look at that in the knowledge of the lord where you lack in the knowledge of the lord is an area for the devil to play games with your mind it is your knowledge in the lord that secures your salvation oh jesus come on so he said all the, the the fruitfulness that must come is coming in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ you know? and you don't sit down by yourself and just know these things that's why teachers are given to you for you to know come on but if you don't adhere to who the lord sent to teach you and connect with those who are there to bring you to this level of grace then how you're gonna come into it talk to me now huh glory to god huh for what he says in verse 9 anyone who lacks these things is what short-sighted means they they lack vision they are just looking at here and now they are just living for the moment short-sighted people don't make long-term plan and what they do is not sustainable come on the car is just thinking about here and now short-sighted even to blindness he says even to the point that they cannot see at all he says and as what and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins and we know if he forget that he was cleansed from his old sins he's going to return that's why many of them have been just dipping and fall back deep and fall back huh we fall down and we get up for a saint is just a sinner who fall down and get up that's for the those who are short-sighted and even to blindness and forgot that his whole sins was cleansed because if you remember he ain't never fall down and get up fall down and get up he ain't into that because what does the word says it says that therefore virgin be even more diligent to make your call and election what sure for it says if you do these things you will what you're going fall down and get up fall down and get up fall down and get up no he says you will never stumble and he says in so doing for so an entrance will be supplied to you how abundantly into what the everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior who oh, jesus christ they don't fall down and get up people not going nowhere they short sighted they little blindness and forget that they cleanse that their sin and keep on replicating the same old life while they want to desire and claim new life they are deceiving themselves so if you want to know the truth the truth set you free from that level of ignorance man and set you free from sin that you can have true knowledge of christ to live and to experience the life of christ in human flesh come on hallelujah and that's why he's given to you come on somebody that's why paul could say i live yet not i but it's who lives 
Christ lives in me. Huh? How many don't believe that Christ really lives in them? They say they claim an idea of Christ that they believe in, but they don't really believe in the person of Christ living in them. Come on, they have received an idea or a view of him and a thought about him being there but they have not really received him but paul said i have been crucified with him it is no longer i who live but christ lives in me and the life which i now live in the flesh he says i live by faith in the one he said who is living in me in the son of god who loves me and gave himself for me come on and you believe that is in you you don't accept negative report from the devil because you would not accept the negative report is in the lord so it's not a thought of the lord you receive you receive the person of the lord hallelujah when you believe that the person he himself is living is dwelling in you my god the true nature and character must show one come on somebody that is the key note of what is called the mystery of the kingdom his indwelling presence in you come on hallelujah that is living his life through you hallelujah that's why paul said in romans 12 verse 1 i beseech you therefore brethren huh that you present your bodies come on now a living sacrifice he said give over that body to jesus let jesus have that body to use and see what he can do with it come on somebody forsake every claim and right you have to that body consider your, your rights to it dead as paul said i is no longer i holy but he who lives in me I, i've been crucified with him i died already but now i live through him that lives in me what you say and he says let that body become that living sacrifice what he says holy and acceptable to god which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world he said don't fit into the mold of this world don't try mellow out with them huh come on now don't try fit in with them don't try to become their body friend because there's always something you have lost to gain that kind of friendship if they don't have that close friendship with christ and they have it with you you already lose something because remember what paul said i no longer live of myself but it's christ who lives in me so if they are not close to christ they know they're close to you unless you were not crucified with him unless your old testimonies are fake come on somebody because you must know say it is he living in you now it's not the idea of him you receive so if they are not close to him they can't get close to you the same way they treat him the same way they will treat you the same way they withdrawn and they're putting off and they're delaying and they're not coming the same way they will treat you because they're treating christ the same way but if they are putting off christ and they're all in talk and love with you then you really don't have the quality come on now because you need to understand what paul means it's no longer i who live it's no longer i come on so any of them love me 
is Christ the love. <laughs> but if they don't love Christ and love me, it's not, it's not Christ in me at all. Is the same old me still there? Come on. Claiming Christ, but still the old me. They don't crucify with Christ yet. But Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I of myself who live. He says, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. He said, I live by faith of the one who lives in me. That's he says, that's how I live. I live believing that he's still living in the earth through this human flesh. That is what the kingdom is about. He says, then we don't have to move the throne from heaven for him to reign on the earth because those who receive the king embrace his governance, his kingdom in their life. That's why it says the kingdom is within you. Huh? Come on now. So you say, if you really believe that Christ is in you, when anyone sees you, they should see Christ. If they don't know Christ, they don't know you. Come on. But if they know Christ, they can testify and attest that truly this one is of the Lord. No, so no, no, come on now. Hallelujah. Come on. Because that's what that's what Paul said. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you. He said. This is the mystery. The hidden truth among the Gentiles is that Christ is in them. They didn't need to get circumcised physically to be circumcised because Christ has become their circumcision. Come on now. They didn't need to keep no holy days and festivals and feasts. Because all those shadows of Sabbaths and new moons and festivals, the full body of it is Christ. They don't need to mark no special day to experience it. Because the one that brings that, that, that exclusivity to them in the Father is Christ. And he dwells in them. You get it? Come on somebody. So he says, it is Christ in you. So he says, him we preach. He said, we're not preaching about him. He said, we preach him to you. We declare him. We release him. When we speak, because it's he speaking through us to you. So he says, when you're receiving the word we speak, you're not just receiving word. He said, you're receiving him. Come on, somebody. You get it? And it says, one in every man and teaching every man what? In all wisdom that we may present every man what? Perfect in Christ. He said, you can be perfect in Christ. Come on. He said, the word didn't come for you to be a sideliner. Huh? The word didn't come for you to be on the bench. Come on. It come to put you into motion and to reveal the life and the nature of Christ within you. Come on. And that's why the Paul was saying in Romans 8 verse 9, he says, you are not in the flesh but in the spirit. If indeed what? The spirit of God dwells in you. He says, now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ. Huh? He is not his. Come on, somebody. Huh? No, he used the term spirit of God synonymous with the term spirit of Christ. Because he said, it's the same life in Christ that he's releasing to you. The same 
life form in Christ is being released to you. That's why I say the spirit of Christ. You're not talking about the flesh. The spirit of Christ. Paul says there was a time once we know Christ by the flesh, but he said we know him not like that anymore. Now we know them by the spirit. How we know him by the spirit is not by the flesh. Come on, at Second Corinthians five, praise God, verse sixteen. Therefore, from no one he says we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. In other words, we don't know him that way any longer. He's not here manifesting in human flesh for us to know him. He said, we know him by the spirit. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he says, what happened to that one? He's a new creation. He still have on that whole flesh. But he said, he's a new being within that flesh. That's why he says, he's a new creation. All things are passed away and the whole what? All things have become new. Come on. Hallelujah. And that's why Paul said, we, we who receive of him, receive of his spirit, we are groaning within ourselves for the manifestation to take its full effect in our bodies, the redemption of this body. As Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. He speak about that groaning. He says, verse 19, the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for what? The revealing of who? The sons of men? No man, sons of God. For the creation was what? Subjected to futility, not willingly. But because of him who subjected in hope, what hope? Because the hope is that we will not remain in this body. Ah, come on. This body is going to be transformed. Hello. Taking on the full form of our daddy. Hallelujah. We have the form of our earthly daddy. But he said we shall put on the form of our heavenly daddy. Come on now. Ah, Jesus. Come on. He says what? Because the creation itself also will be delivered. From what? The bondage of corruption into what? The glorious liberty of the children of God. And what is the bondage of corruption that creation itself is subject to? Decay. Death. Trees die. Birds die. Fish dies. And we know when death is on the land, it carries a stench. Animals and birds and fishes and trees and carry stench when it dies he said that that's just produce corruption even when human dies it just produce corruption but he said they are waiting for the glorious liberty that when our body change they will also conform to the glory that we have come into because all this was made for us come on somebody he said we know that the whole creation groans and labors with what Bird pangs, he's talking about like a woman in labor, ready to give birth to her baby. He says she's going through contractions. The pain is getting closer and closer. But he said that's only because the redemption is drawing nigh. Come on. He says not only that, but we also have what? The first truth. He said, we already bear that deposit of the spirit of christ within us his life within us come on how many people believe his life is in them come on then if you believe his life is in you no devil and demon can get you depressed and oppressed and stressed out no i think so many of you say you believe you don't believe yet you see because when your mind is fixed on this that of the deposit you have it changes the course of how you respond to things around you because of who is in you remember what paul said it is no longer i who live come on because of who is in you 
the first fruit is always is already there the first deposit come on even we ourselves he says grown within ourselves eagerly waiting for what because what we are sensing inside it feels restricted by this body we're wearing hallelujah hallelujah we, we waiting for the redemption of our body for we were saved what we were saved in this hope you don't say we're going to be saved you say we saved what he said we saved in the hope of how this body is going to be changed come on so he said that's why we're waiting for it you know because he said we don't see the body change yet huh because he says but hope that is seen is not hope for why does one still hope for what he sees what what happened but if we hope for what we do not see what we going to do eagerly wait for it with what come on somebody so we can play games with this thing this thing is real come on somebody and we, we believe in the kingdom of god we believe that his kingdom is operating within us then the gates of hell cannot prosper come on they will have to speak with authority you got to command the host of heaven I understand that angels are attentive to your voice because when you speak is not you speaking it's Christ Lord of mercy and he can command the angels and they will hear hallelujah come on now God say, man, you must know you have this power you must know the the great i am hallelujah has given the first fruit of his deposit of his very essence and life within you i don't hear you in this place and if he's in you my god something must shake man something must move anything the enemy is sending to cramp and to holy and restrict you must pop off now not later not next year hello right now because that knowledge comes with immediate effect glory to god that knowledge come with immediate response and result and he say if you mix the word with faith the word don't have no delayed response immediately oh come on somebody hello do you believe that life is in you come on give god the praise in here obedience obedience and abiding in the word attracts the favor and blessings and approval of god huh? obedience and what abiding in the word that shows a level of consistency it says it attracts the favor blessing and approval of god come on first peter 1 verse 14 to 16 first peter 1 verse 14 and 16 says as obedient children as what obedient children not conforming yourself to the former loss as in your ignorance he said that behavior was a point when you were ignorant of the knowledge and the power and presence of god he said but now as he who call you talk to me now who call you and he said as he who call you is holy you also oh you like that one you also be what holy in a sum in a more say you can duck you can't do it all you know you're just human being the devil is a liar he said if you believe that you have crucified with christ and he lives with you you know just as he is holy come on now you also 
must be holy in what all your conduct why because it is written he gave you the instruction that is encoded in the word the living word that is residing in you be holy for i am holy that that is in your dna hallelujah as a child of god come on somebody and you see you can't do anything against that nature the divine nature that is operating in you and still be the same come on somebody he said in ephesians 5 ephesians 5 verse 1 to 21 praise god Ephesians, he says, therefore be what? Imitators of God as his dear children. Walk in love as who? As Christ has also loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Christ gave himself even unto death, he said just as christ loved us he said that's the kind of service that christ gave to the father he said you must offer yourself like that as an offering sacrifice to god for a sweet smelling aroma but what fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be even named amongst you in other words say not even one time that must be named amongst you as fitting for who are called what not who call sinners here by grace is who fitting for those who are saints a word that is dying out of the congregation today you know you much call themselves saints unless they're mocking them and say you they go on like you are saint they don't believe in the word he says neither filthiness nor what foolish talking or coarse jesting which are not fitting he said saints must be in them kind of thought but rather giving of what thanks for this you know he said anyone who know the lord know this no fornicator no unclean person nor uncovicious man yeah not covetous man who is an idolater he said all of those this as fornicators and clean person covetous person he said they are idolaters you know they put those things before the kingdom he said anyone doing such thing has no inheritance in the kingdom of christ come on you're reading it come on no inheritance in the kingdom of christ and of god, and god. so let no one deceive you with empty words because some will tell it no isn't on him the lord knows that <laughs> we live in a sinful world and you go do something sometime they may do it so i tell you hey you follow them empty words for because of these things what happened the wrath of god huh comes upon who the sons of disobedience he says therefore do not be partakers with them come on because when they're talking that they partaking of it why they telling you say no mind other people doing it too because they doing it too that's why they say that come on now give me more he says for you were once did he say once once me say no supposed to go back to the twice and thrice and more once means it should be over you were once darkness but now who are you light in the lord walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is in all what goodness righteousness and truth he said the fruit of the spirit not birth not name sin that that we know from the word the fruit of the spirit is in all what goodness and in all what righteousness and in all what truth so i said no sin no you know what the fruit of the spirit produce so if you say you have the spirit of christ in you and it producing sin and not the christ spirit that another spirit but it's not christ spirit he says finding out what is acceptable to the lord you need to know what is acceptable to the lord that's why you must come and be taught 
and be discipled. And many are not until they can still do it. Crash and burn and still say, God understand. It was not meant to be so. So it says, having no fellowship with what? If he said no fellowship, it means you mustn't take part into nothing that they're doing in the world. You know, every year, start church and workplaces where many believers work where they call staff parties. Come on now. And so much Christian go and intermingle with them to say they're having fun and you know the lyrical content that is played there and you know the behavior that is there you know the activities and the speech and the coarse jesting and the idle talk and the immorality that they, and you say what do you know with us go there to just enjoy yourself the Lord said don't have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather what your thing said jesus when god he just went god and a drink drink and talk and clap on with him he would be exposed they wouldn't want him there at all because he would be he would damn in their party because what he'd be saying is not what they would want to hear not true so he, he says but rather expose them he didn't say ignore them. Go there and ignore what they do. Because you're just part of this stuff. He said, no, expose them. Huh? Come on, give me more. For it is shameful even to what? Come on, talk to me. It is what? Shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them. Where? Yeah, man, that's why they love the night party. Because... Uh, what done in a dark then say what well, you see don't speak don't make it leave here huh? what well, you see here don't make it leave here <laughs> what we know those who have the lights don't hide those things what they do they expose them he says all things are exposed are made manifest by who by the light. Light don't cover up things like they expose it. And whatever makes manifest is what? Light. So you say, if you is light and you dear, you're not going to cover it up. That's what he's saying. You know? He says, therefore, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead. And Christ will do what? Because if Christ give you light, you're not going to be dear helping to conduct the darkness and the works done in darkness they want to expose them see then that you walk what circumspectly not as fools but as what as wise hallelujah redeeming the time you know i'm no more time for waste nothing that's why i say you once were darkness you know come back to that again because the days are what evil therefore do not be unwise but do what But do what? Understand what the will of the Lord is. Come on. Understand it. Same thing we're talking about. Understanding the word of the kingdom. Do they really understand it? Can they really relate to others? Or do they just play it safe? Come on. Do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is what? Dissipation, there's excess, and there is unsound and loose behavior and standards being displayed. Huh? Dissipation. He says, but be filled with the Spirit. Come on. You believe Savior God that star party. You're going to be filled with the spirit. Uh, and you believe say you then go to go speak to one another during our psalms and spiritual hymns and spiritual psalms. And most some other spiritual psalms, but they're not even spiritual. We're talking about. Come on. Singing and making melody in your heart. You think it's that they're doing there. 
Come on. Now, many don't take this word serious, but I tell you, the results are shown up in their life that they have breached certain protocols and principles that the kingdom of God declare to his teaching and principles. They have compromised on to bridge a friendship with the world. And now it is putting their whole faith and position in a, in a, in a, in a very compromising position. Come on, somebody. Huh? Give me more. Giving thanks always for what? All things to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. He says, submitting to one another in what? The fear of God. Obedience and abiding in the word. What does it do? Attracts the favor, blessings, and approval of God. That's the point we just gave you, correct? Praise God. But it is also true that disobedience and unbelief in the word of God attracts the opposition, which is Satan, curses, come on, and the wrath of God. It attracts what? The opposition, which is the adversary Satan. It attracts curses, come on, huh? and the wrath of God Ephesians 5 verse 6 huh? verse 6 to what verse 6 to 13 praise God let no one deceive you with or read it already but I'll read it again but let no one deceive you with empty words for because of these things what the wrath of God comes upon who the sons of disobedience. So it says, therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as what? Children of light. Come on. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And having what? No fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather do what expose them come on somebody for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret but all things that are exposed are what made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is what is light so it's either you have darkness or you have light but it can be both come on Colossians 3 verse 6 to 8. Colossians 3 verse 6 to 8. Hallelujah. It says for. Come on. Because of these things. What? The wrath of God is coming upon who? The sons of disobedience. Does he talk about sons of disobedience? Oh yes. He says in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them. Notice every time he speak about you, he say, once walk. He don't say habitually walk and walk several times and sometimes you still walk. So he said once, me say, it must not again. But now, you see the but now? But now you yourselves are to what? Put off all these things. What's that? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy and what? filthy language out to your mouth huh praise god because say all those things what they do do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and you put on what come on talk to me you put on what the new man who is what you notice where the new man operate from and knowledge in the Lord. If you lack that knowledge, or oh, you're gonna operate as that new one. Is the world giving you that knowledge? No, you're getting that knowledge in the house of God from the teachers who God appoint to release that knowledge to you. I tell you, many will run to others, but we will see how that work out for them. He says, renewed in a knowledge according to what? The image of him who created him. Whether there is, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, 
circumcised now and circumcised barbarian Scythian slave now free but Christ is what it all comes right back to Christ come on somebody Christ being in you what you say hallelujah Ephesians 2 verse 2 to 5 hallelujah he says in which you once walk according give me some verse 1 praise God hallelujah he says and you he made alive who were what dead in trespassing and sin notice he used the word were dead you're not in that anymore that is past tense but he speaks now but now in which you once walk according see the ones there again once walk according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the ear the spirit who now works in who see it that spirit is working in the sons of disobedience among whom he says also we also what once conducted you see the ones once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh fulfilling what the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature what children of wrath just as others come on but god what who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he had loved us what did he do even when we're dead in our trespasses what did he do he made us alive together with christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up together come on christ dead still no because he raised him up so he says you've been raised up to new life that life spirit is in you now raise us up together and made us what sit together in heavenly places in who christ that in ages to come he might show what the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards who us who are in who in christ jesus it's not everybody in him but those who are in him bear the evidence also the proof is shown that christ lives in them by the life that they live come on those who reject the word of god also reject god and his messengers those who what reject the word of god reject god and his messengers and that was true according to what the lord shared through jeremiah when jeremiah was sent to minister to the people they rejected him no sir In jeremiah 18 hallelujah jeremiah 18 verse 1 to 18 hallelujah he found that he was rejected because of the word that he brought god sent him to help them but they in turn rejected the help that god sent and they thought they was all right by themselves but you see if god knows you need help you're not to reject help sent because he knows you need the help to get to the position that you need to reach come on now hello and jeremiah was one sent hello praise god hallelujah so the word of the lord came to jeremiah saying arise go down to the who where the path now jeremiah is a prophet of the lord does jeremiah need to go to any special place to hear the word of the lord no but the lord tell him say you need to go down to the potter's house and when you go down there there i will cause you to hear my word in other words the lord tell him where he must go to hear it but some today now graduate they don't need to come here so to hear it you know yeah, man, because they have internet now and, and they know the lord for themselves and they know they're not sinning so don't, don't go at church church is in the heart they, they 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 know they they will tell you that but but we know what the word of god said there isn't it the lord told jeremiah do is a prophet you need to go down to the where they make pots down to the potter's house and go down there and not, when you go down there you're going to hear a word from me come on so Je jeremiah comes down and say i don't need to go down there to hear a word from you i'm your prophet you can't tell me anything tell me right here sir that's how many believe in and they are not prophets but jeremiah is a prophet 
knew he had to obey to get the word. You get it? And they don't see that connection out of that lesson. It's still a mystery to them. Because they're not being discipled. They're doing it themselves. He says, then, then he says, then I went down to the potter's house. Not true. And there he was making something at the wheel. The vessel that he made of clay was marred in, his, in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel. And it seemed good to the potter to make. So he says, he never making no good into this vessel. He made it into a different one. Huh? Praise God. And he said, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? In other words, what this potter do with the clay, can I not do it with you? He was going to make it into one vessel, but because it was marred in his hand, he made it into a different vessel than the one he had intended to make it. That's what he was saying, you know. So watch what Jeremiah said. So what Jeremiah saw was actually the picture of what God was going to tell him. That's why the Lord said, go down there to see it, and when you see it, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. So if he didn't go there to see it, he wouldn't understand the fullness of that word. Come on now. In other words, those who don't come here that just said they want to stay and watch my it, not seeing certain things, you know. You better understand that. They're not seeing certain things because they, they cannot see everything from the camera. You get it? Only you that are here know some things that they're not seeing. The camera is at two and focus on one angle. That's all they see. But you see, they, those who are a lot of point to come and have come, they are seeing more. Ooh. Glory to God. Hello, somebody. And that is true there in the word, and it's true right here. Come on now. So this says, then the word of the Lord came to him, no, sir. And said, Look, come on. As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to do what? To pluck up, to pull it down, and to destroy it. He said, if that nation against whom I have spoken turn from its evil. He said, it repents. If the nation repent, it's not if they say, I'm sorry, and they're still doing it. Come I mean, and say, I'm sorry, but they're not making no effort to change. And whatever effort they make is not sustainable. You have to still be talking to them about the same thing over and over and over and over again. So it's what the Lord said, but if I determine to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy one nation and the nation turn from its evil and say, I'll relent the disaster I thought to bring upon that nation. You know? In other words, what I plan to do in making that nation into a vessel for destruction, I will turn and now make it a vessel to Hannah. Like he said, it was in the potter's hand to make it into one vessel, but because he spoiled, he made it into something else. Not what he intended before, but just something else. So he says, that's what he said he wanted Jeremiah to see, to understand this message. He said, the instant again I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom. Now this is not to pluck apart, to destroy, to pull down. But he said, to build and to plant it. Eh? And to establish it. Eh? He said, if it does evil after me plan to do it good. What happened? See him good in going get? Because it's not by works, you see, it's by grace. You still they don't know the word, you see? You need to understand the kingdom. He says, if it does even my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good which I said I would benefit it. Why? Because it turned its position against what the Lord intended. And so he says, he's not going to get the same result turning against what I intended. Though I promised him the good result, he will not get it. Come on now, somebody. 
He says, Now therefore speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning what? A disaster and divining a plan against you. Return now everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. Come on. Huh? What did they say? Yes, Lord. <laughs> Come on now. No, they didn't hear the Lord saying this, you know. Who they heard saying this was Jeremiah. And the devil, like I said, have a way of making people believe. Did the Lord really say? I was that Jeremiah. You get it? And, and so they cause the devil caused them to doubt that God really spoke by him. And what did they say? That is hopeless. In other words, that is not doable. It's impossible, just like I said. They want us to be perfect. Nobody can be perfect. It's hopeless. You're going to be perfect in a sinful world like this. It's hopeless, man. Huh? Aren't they saying the same thing today? So what they say they're going to do? So we will walk according to our own plans. In other words, he's not going to speak and change what we do in our thing. We're doing our thing, or we're doing it, man. Make him go and talk. We're sticking to our route and to our plan according to our own plans and we will everyone what we will do whatever our hearts feel right to do him not to tell us what to, he want to control us he can't control us man and that's when people tell you you, 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 you you want to say i'm mean, your disciples so you can control you can control unruly unstable Come on. They have not developed a love for the truth. Come on now, somebody. So therefore, what? What did the Lord say? Ask now the Gentiles. In other words, ask the Eden and those who don't know God. Who has heard such a thing? The virgin of Israel has done a horrible thing. What horrible thing have they done? Will a man leave the snow waters of Lebanon, which comes from the rock of the field? Will the cold flowing waters be forsaken for what? So they take substitution for what God prescribed for them. They are you in a substitute. Come on. Talk to me now. Is that what the Lord said we must do? He says, because my people have what? Forgotten me. They have burned incest to what? Worthless idols. In other words, they are honoring other things that have nothing to do with God. They will say, we're not born before no image. We're not. Is God still worshiping? But where are they? Come on. They have caused themselves to what? To stumble in their ways from the ancient parts to walk in what pathways and not a highway in other words they are choosing their own course we can't tell them what to do anymore they have their own course set what is right in their eyes according to the dictates of their heart because you want me no say you don't know nothing man i don't know the thing you only there to facilitate on a well knowledge learning <laughs> to make their land what that's why the things start to dry up on them now that's why the abundance they should be having now is dwindling away because i said the land is becoming desolate and a perpetual hissing everyone passing by it will astonish and shit head and say what that 
Come on, somebody. What the Lord say will do. I will scatter them with an east wind before the enemy. And I will show them the back. Come on now. Or you like the talk to God like that. We are going to get through when God turns up. Come on. I will show them the back and not the face. In the day of their calamity. In other words, in the day that they want the help the most. I will show them the back and not the face. Come on, somebody. You want to play with God? <laughs> Check the book, man. It's coming. Then they said, come, let us devise a plan. Uh, you see, at the spokesman, no. <laughs> Let's get rid of this messenger. As you hear when he talks about what God will do with me. You think they didn't have other prophets they were listening to that were telling them? No man, the temple, the temple, the temple. We are safe. Anyway, we cry out to the Lord, the temple, the temple. The Lord will protect us. But Jeremiah was telling them, no. God is going to rip down every structure of believing the temple. For you to know, say, he is God. Come on, somebody. Huh? He said, For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor the counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us attack him. So they were listening to other prophets, you know. Look at it. The law shall not perish from the priest, the counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us attack him with the tongue and let us not give heed to any of his words that we listen to somebody because only one here here for the Lord what I told you they, they will have itchy ears drawing to themselves teachers strong delusion will come upon them to believe they are right when they are wrong Jesus. Come on now. Hello. Did you notice in verse 12? Look at verse 12 again. Their rejection of the word that is hopeless. So we'll walk according to our own plans. Did you realize that their first response was to reject that God really spoke that to his servant. They rejected the word. Verse 12, you see that? They say, no, we're we, we going to go according to our own plans. We will, every one of the dictates of his evil heart. Whatever we feel our heart lead us to do, we're going to do it. Come on. And what did that in turn lead to? Rejection of God. Verse 15 to 17. Rejection of what? God. God then said, because my people have forgotten me. He said, not Jeremiah. You know, me. Because if they remember him, they would have reverence for Jeremiah. Because he's him sent Jeremiah. But they don't have no respect or reverence for Jeremiah because they have already forgotten God. They have burned incense to idols. They have other things they are putting before him. They cause themselves to stumble in their own ways. Huh? Gone from the ancient parts. They're not going according to God's way anymore. They find their own part now. They find a part that works for them against what Jeremiah is saying. Come on. They find their own part to walk in pathways. Huh? And not on highways. To make their land become desolate. And a perpetual hissing. Come on somebody. Huh? What, what will happen? He says, 
People are going to look and shed it and say, look what they become. Because the Lord will scatter them. And the Lord will give them the back and not the face in the time of their calamity. Come on, somebody. So, the rejection of the word of God led to rejection of God. Not true? And the rejection of God led to rejection of his messenger. Verse 18. The rejection of God led to what? So they said, come let us devise a plan against Jeremiah. <laughs> yeah. They start to form clique. Subgroups. And say, hey, we don't have to listen to that man. <laughs> we can edify each other one. Reason among ourselves and get better encouragement than when we listen to him. When, he's li when we listen to him, his words are harsh. He's long-winded and he talk enough and he words them cut. So let us find our local group where we can sit and we understand each other. We can sit and talk. You don't have to listen to him. Come on. Jews who believed on Jesus. Hello? Jews what? Believed on Jesus. Yet because of his word or his doctrine, they rejected him, his word, and also became rejected by God. That is in St. John 8 verse 30. To 47. The same thing is there. The same principle. We will talk about mysteries. Of the kingdom. God's means of governance. And we say if you don't know it. You will trip up and fall. The same way like others did in the past. And face the same consequence. Because it's not a different God. It's the same God. Hello somebody. Jew, the, the Jews believed on him. Huh? Jews what? Believed on him in verse 30 of John chapter 8. They believe on Jesus. But though they believed on him because of the miracles done, they did not believe in his doctrine. Watch this. He says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, that is my doctrine, my teachings, you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free come on now somebody what is the result they answered and said abrams we are abram the same man we have never been in bondage to anyone how can you say you'll be made free is the teaching they are challenging Yet they say, they believe in him. Come on. Now. And he says, Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Huh? Therefore he says what? They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. So have they accepted that he tell them that they need to be set free? And they, they eh? no, they said they are Abraham's children, no so. Uh, we don't need to be set free. Because we are we've never been in bondage to any man. And the Lord said, No man, those who commit sin as slaves have sin also. Hello. He answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said, If you were Abraham's children, you would what? do the works of abraham but now you seek to kill me see once they reject the word they reject god they reject god they reject the messenger the same nature and spirit is operating there you got it and he says they then would turn just as that would conspire and kill against Jeremiah, no, they will conspire and kill against him. A man who has told them the truth 
which he heard from God. Did you see that? Verse 40. He says, Abraham did not do this. So you be children of Abraham and you're not operating like Abraham did. Isn't that what he's saying? So he says, you do the deeds of your father. Come on. And they said to him, we are not born of fornication. We have one father. Who is that father? They say, God. Did Jesus agree and say, yes, we have one father? No, God, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. He says, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are what? You're not able to listen to my word. Come on. They reject the word. They reject the father. And they also reject the messenger. Therefore what? He says they are also rejected by God. That's what Jesus says. You are of your father the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie. He speaks from his own resources. He is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth. You do not believe me. Come on. He says which of you convicts me of sin. And if I tell you the truth. Why do you not believe me. Ah, verse 47 he says he who is of God hears God's words come on somebody therefore you do not hear why that's the rejection of God now you are not of God come on you are not of God the rejection comes there Jesus taught even amongst his disciples in John 15 verse 1 to 8 he taught amongst his disciples that you must understand this principle they must abide in his teachings no, sir. to abide in him that's why I said if you abide in me and my word abide in you that's his teaching no sir, no, sir. There's, there it is he says every branch in me that does not bear fruit the father says takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it bear more fruit you are already clean because of what the words which I have spoken to you so he says abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it what abides in the vine neither can you unless what you abide in me give me more so he says, I am the vine, you are the branches, he who abides in me, and what? I in him does what they do. Bears much fruit, for without me you can do. And he says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. That's the rejection. They gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. If you abide in me, and what? my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you by this my father is glorified that you bear what much fruit and be my disciples consider what it said also in saint john 6 verse 52 to 71 once they reject the message they also reject the messenger and they also become rejected. Many don't see that connection of the vine and the branches and the fruit. Jesus is giving that description. That mystery about the kingdom. Hidden truths about the principles of how the kingdom is governed. And he says if you know this truth. You will also agree and work in understanding how it operates. And maximize fruitfulness in your life. Hello somebody. Hello. Uh, from verse 52. Yes the Jews. Therefore quarrel among themselves. Saying what? Saying what? How can this man. Give us his flesh to eat? They were also. Con con uh, contending with Jesus' teachings. All who contend with Jesus' teachings. Did they become better? No they became worse. 
and were rejected by God. Watch this. He says, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day come on somebody i will what come on raise him up he says for my flesh is what food indeed and my blood is what drink indeed he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and i in him come on somebody as the living father sent me and i live because of my father what how does he live because of his father he says so he who feeds on me will live what because of me come on does he feed and father flesh and blood no so he's talking more than about flesh and blood but they didn't pay attention intended to understand beyond the words that are being used what is the hidden meaning and revelation in it that's why they stumbled that's why they were disqualified because if you don't understand seek more understanding from the one who's teaching but don't try to find your own they, they, they that was their error they tried to find their own and the word of god said trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not your own understanding is erroneous and will lead you into trouble but if you trust the Lord, the Spirit of Christ don't lead you into error. Come on, somebody. You got it? So he says, as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven and not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. But he who eats this bread will what? Live forever. Come on now. And he says, these things he said where? In his synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Remember, every, every synagogue he went to, what he was preaching? Gospel of the kingdom. So he's still the gospel he was preaching when he said that, you know. He says, therefore, many of his disciples, hearing it, when they heard, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? In other words, nobody not going to understand that. From you start to say, nobody can understand it. You'll never get it, you know. Because you are then saying that the teacher is unreasonable. He cannot be reasoned because what he's teaching doesn't make sense and no student can get it. That is a charge against the teacher that he's not teaching good. And you can't say a teacher not teaching good and learn nothing solid from him. listen what they said this is a hard saying who can understand it when jesus knew in himself that his disciples what what was the word complained about this what did he say to them he saw that offense was rising they are becoming contemptuous now this was not the behavior of true students. Talk to me now. True students don't contend with the teacher. Talk to me. So the Lord said, what then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? <laughs> and he did ascend where he was before. After his resurrection come on somebody and disciples that remain with him did see that he ascended come on now. so so we know then that these here did not get to see that because they were still contending and end up that contending led to their departure he says the lord said to them for them to gain understanding since they were saying nobody couldn't understand it what the lord said in verse 63 
It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh no profit no. You know, say eat a flesh and you have my blood in a tank, but you can become cannibal and start to feed that my natural flesh. The Lord was saying, it is the spirit. And he said, so what, what is the spirit that brings that flesh and blood? He said, it's the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are the life. It's the words. Is that flesh and blood you're eating and drinking. Come on. So you say, when you feed on me, you don't come just to sit down to keep me company. You come to draw from the words that come out of my mouth. He said, that's how you get life. Come on, somebody. They missed it. Come on. But what did Jesus say? Jesus knew all when he said that. They were still not contented. So he explained what they say. No one could understand and they still begs. God, because I guess they were saying in themselves. Then why you say it like that first? Why you never just say so? In other words, they want to tell him how to teach. And anytime you want to tell a teacher how to teach, you want to take over the teaching. He's no longer your teacher. You want to be his teacher. Come on now. He said, but there are some of you who do not believe. For what? For what? Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore I've said to you that no one can come to me unless what? It has been granted by my in other words jesus knew before the father already make divine selection and election who would remain and who would go who would be truly a part of the movement and who would just be the what they call the 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 the, the, the chapel chapel it yeah that they put up to hold up the concrete when they build the walls but after it gone they tear it up and threw it away some people were just capoling. They just come to just hold up some things till it's set and after it then gone. They are not going to really inherit the fullness of this. He said just like that. He says they were there as disciples but what happened to them? From that time many of them went back and walked with him. No more. Then what happened to them? They still get safe when they walk with him no more. Not at all. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? What a wise man. <laughs> whom shall we go? You have the words. Come on. In other words, is your teaching that is given to us eternal life you get it you got the teaching what a wise student come on no wonder satan when he hunt for head seeking to sift him like wheat he said where we going to go come on and uh, what did the lord say did i not choose huh because Jude, peter not only said he have the words of life but it says we believe and know that you are the christ you are the one the father anointed for us you are the son of the living god you are god's offspring huh and the lord said did i not choose you the 12 but the lord still knows that one day i'm going to part of this thing you know? and he spoke about that one of you is a devil. And he said, he spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of who? Simon, the same one who invited Jesus to eat at his house and then saying if this man was a prophet, he wouldn't make this woman be touching him. That's Judas' father, Simon the Pharisee. So if father talk against Jesus' qualification as a prophet and the same night the son said couldn't this money this perfume have been sold and the money given to the poor and jen just said leave her alone 
Can watch the done is to my burial and anywhere this gospel is preached, this one must be mentioned. He still go to see him not to see him could betray Jesus to get some money. Come money in both, you know. All the Judas that they follow me for money, so don't get him. Because they need to understand this is not about the money. I'm not doing this for money. And so those who think say this is all that glitter is going and running down the hole. They soon find out. Eh? They say, say, he spoke up Judas Iscariot and said, Watch where I am to him. <laughs> Come on now. Doom from the beginning because I'm only alone in the run down. You know? Hello. That's why I want to hold the money back. Come on now. Hello, somebody. And Jesus knows his intention a long time. But Jesus knows that anyone that truly wants to bear fruit in the kingdom of God must have their heart set on the things that are prioritized in the kingdom. Otherwise, the other side, this blind blindside them and cause them to drift off and become something totally different from what God the Potter intended. And he said, instead of making them a, a best love Hannah, now they become a, a best love this Hannah. Instead of one that should be used for God, Lord, now they're going to be disposable. Not one for him to keep, but one to be used and then discarded. Come on now. God wants us to have a different report in this house. But as long as we keep doing it our way, I tell you that report not coming from any. Come on. Because if you're bent into doing it your way, you don't understand the kingdom yet. Hello, somebody. You have to understand, not even Jesus came and did it his way. And not even the Holy Spirit came and did it his way. Each one coming saying, he will not speak of his own authority. The son didn't speak of his own authority. He did what and said what he heard the father said and what the father showed him to do. The Holy Spirit is saying when he come, he will not do it of his own authority, but he will speak of those things you have heard. That will he speak. So when you come doing things of your own authority, which spirit of things you operating by? Because it is the devil, the word of God says, when he lies, he speak, when he speaks, he speaks from his own resources. For he's a liar and the father of lies. Come on now. Hello. The word of God needs to soak into your spirit. Whose side are you leaning on? Come on. Hello, somebody. Uh, then, then, then Moses said to the people, Who is on the Lord's side? Stand with me. And some get up and go stand with Korah. <laughs> stand with who opposed Moses. Not. Still, I believe saying stand with the Lord. But, but Moses said, Man, God, if, if, if them right, no, make them die in ordinary death. But you see, if they're not right, make an extra ordinary death with them. And I tell you, the, the place where they stand, the earth became like quicksand, and them and then tent and then children and then things just swell up under the earth, and the earth become solid again, like say, they were never even there. I mean, that is is buried alive <laughs> and i tell you nobody no one get that kind of burial extraordinary they treat them because the fear of the lord was not in them come on now those who fear the lord and are god's servants you know <laughs> come on now those who fear the Lord and are God's servant, they don't stand and become contentious and reviling and huh, resistant and self willed and proud and stuck up and withdrawn and indifferent and think that somehow they still got angry with God. It's not so this thing work. Come on. You have to understand how to humble yourself. Hello. To what? 
Oh, humble yourself before God because God have a plan and a purpose for you that is established in his kingdom. No, sir. But you cannot embrace the fullness of the kingdom if you're still in resistance. You're still doing it your own way. You're still holding on to your thoughts and your views and beliefs and opinion as it. It's not, we are not called to be opinionated. We are called to be word based. You understand? That we, we, well, faith must be built on the word for it to be true faith. It's not built on opinion. Hello? Can be built on opinion and produce fruitful results. Are you hearing me? Because it's based on the truth of the word that we have fruitful results. Huh? And second Peter 1 verse 20. Peter wrote, spoke about that knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Huh? For prophecy never came by the will of man. In other words, it's not man. Make up what they to say and just say to people, and people must just do what they say because they say they are prophets and they talk. No, he said true prophets are holy men of God moved as they were moved huh they spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit they spoke as they were what so when they spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit and you resist is what spirit make you resist it <laughs> come on now you got it so we, we know unless we put to death that level of resistance to the truth level of resistance to godly leadership level of resistance to godly and sound doctrine then we will always be aware in what we everything we see and do it will become unstable and those who are unstable can't truly receive and retain anything from the lord everything they have will soon be blown away hello the devil going to come and just have a field here and just destroy all that they have because they have not learned the principle of governance from the lord that will let them attain and retain what god released to them huh and this this is those are the principles of the kingdom man god is not taking it from the wicked and give it to people that still work in wickedness. You're not going to take it from thief and still give it to thief. So if he's going to move it from those who are unfaithful, he must move it to those who are faithful. And if you don't prove yourself faithful, when going to move it to you? So though they are wicked and they have it, God don't move it from them yet because he's looking for people who is faithful to move it to. No, so. Or what what justification we there to move it from the unfaithful to others who are also unfaithful so that's why they say the fruit that the spirit produce faithfulness yes sir galatians 5 verse 22 and 23 the fruit that the spirit produce what faithful so if there's no faithfulness and steadfastness in your position and your actions then that is showing the evidence that the devil have a hand in it meddling and defiling the work that god is doing in you and until you become steadfast and immovable and grounded in the truth he will always have that kind of access to 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 weaken and to deplete the work of god into your life every point you feel like you're making one step forward you end up make two step back because the devil still have a hand into your life until you have drawn the line and say no more it will continue to happen that way come on now but if you make up in your mind and and commit your whole heart to the lord say this is it lord live or die <laughs> come on god's going to vindicate that desire man and intention 
with some fruitful results that shows that his presence is having that freeway in your life to produce and to bear fruit in you eh? but if you are not giving him that kind of attention and that kind of response there, there is going to be a wrestling between you and God and I tell you you are still going to lose hello so the kingdom is about us coming into that order of what the king desires and requires of us that we can be partakers huh and coheres hallelujah in its governance of the kingdom because said it is the father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom but you must submit yourself to be truly discipled come on otherwise you can't come into discipleship if you are not being discipled huh somebody must be discipling you hallelujah because even the disciples were discipled before the Lord sent them out to disciple others no so but they didn't stay by themselves and just was discipled or they didn't disciple themselves to disciple others <laughs> oh Jesus I tell you I'm praying for so many that they that God in his mercy will give them understanding on this that they will understand the importance of discipleship that they not try to still disciple himself and things that will come up with because I've met many who say no the Lord himself teach me and I, I wasn't taught by anybody <laughs> I tell you the mess that they're in today the mess that they're in I, I have to ask them then then who really disciple you because <laughs> you, 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 you need some work amen so because they, 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 um, their minds are so mixed up there's so much disorder in their life and in their behavior and in their speech and in their relationship and in their function in the kingdom that you say they now who disciple you come on you know, I remember there was some athlete that wanted to run on some some world international level, but he no want no coach. He no coach himself. Uh, man, uh, he didn't have much um, uh, any long term of, of of success into it at all because he's trying to work with raw talent against people who are being trained and coach how to use and maximize their raw talent at optimum level and he's not having no one to train to that but he just want to use raw vigor and strength man he suffer injury till he have to just fall out you might know the name you know say the name but you know, you know. amen <laughs> it never go long you know true because the, you see no matter how well you say you can do the thing you still need someone to mentor and and to tweak those abilities you have that it can operate at an optimum level and he decided say, no man no one nobody disciple him <laughs> you know because i mean look look at who been been, been coaching bold you know you, you look to see somebody slender and somebody fit and you see this big belly man but but Bolt was doing well under his coaching didn't he yes because he's still giving him the right pointers to tweak his ability and skill that he could have a long term huh long term success in it till he himself could resign and all when he resigned he still had a lot more in him could do even more and up till now nobody not breaking record you know see so what i'm telling you say the, the, the persons who choose to do that self self training they are going to end up with some handicaps that's going to make their work very frustrating and very difficult and we're saying you don't have to do it that way god has provided trainers for you what we say 
God has what? Provided trainers for you that you don't have to do the trial and error. Because some trial and error you don't recover from. Some trial and error are fatal. And so it would do you good to have good mentorship in your life when you're seeking to have good and enduring and lasting success. Eh? Because nobody just want to do just for do. They want to get good results and lasting results. No, so? Right, so we know that we're giving the word here. My God, an adulterated word. No mix up, no sugar coat, no pretense, huh? No contamination, pure word of God and the Holy Spirit working in the house. And you know, say that is being done, man. No, you feel gravity to the thing, man. And they say, Give me more, give me more, give me more. How we if they run your dung if you make you get some. No, sir. You really don't understand this thing. Right? So if you really desire this thing, the Lord say it will be yours. I said those who will come as parables too. They will still hear it as parables. All of me talking to them. Clearly, they still don't understand what we're talking about. I will not tell what I mean. It will still be like parables to them because they don't really look into what is being said. They don't really desire to know. Those who desire to know will know, man. Hello. Praise God. Those who seek will find. Those who knock the doors will open. Those who ask will receive. Everyone the Lord said who does, he said, will receive. Come on. So you say, well then, how are you not receiving? Come on. You have to understand. You have to go back to the drawing board and start to re-examine. What did you miss out? What did you lose sight on? Where did you get slack off and allow the enemy to have leeway? That is coming in and crippling and holding back and restricting what God says yours. Come on now. So one person learn the principles of the kingdom and we tell you, if you want to learn more, we are here to give it to you. Come on now. Because the mysteries of the kingdom are for those who are truly being discipled. Come on. So that's why the Lord sent them say, go and make disciples of nations. That's Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20. Yes. Go and make disciples of them, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. So he's telling what I teach you, teach it to them. Come on now. So I determined to teach you what the Lord teaching, what he deposited in me. I'm depositing in you. But you must truly desire this thing. You can't force it on you. And it turn out good. Hello. <laughs> you, the, the, to have personal interest in that thing, you have to develop personal interest. I can make you develop personal interest. That comes from your initiative to say, I really want to know this. And push. Also. And it will come on. And that's what God wants to have anyway. Amen. But the devil will put a lot of roadblocks and detours and distractions along the way. And if you're not focused on this thing, you will look and see many years pass and you still don't reach nowhere. Because you're still not getting into the heartbeat of what you're really here for. The word of the kingdom. See first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Eh? We can't make you really seek it if you don't really want it. So that is up to you if you really want it. You must show that you really want it. What you say? Praise God. All right, we're going to have questions and comments and response from you, and we get into more to address the questions. Those who are watching online, of course, can type in your questions or your comments. Hallelujah. We'll, of course, bring them on here, speak them on here, and address them 
as much as we have time available to do so praise god as we deal with questions or comments in the house now amen praise god your time hallelujah Good night, Apostle. Good night, everyone. So, um, while I was sitting here, well, first, thank you for the word, Apostle. Praise while God. I was sitting here, I was, you know, thinking on, I'm like, Lord, what stood out to me tonight? <laughs> and then it's like I've, I've been there searching through my spirit, what I've been hearing, but then what the, the word that the Lord dropped in my spirit was humility. Mm -hmm. um, and he was saying, you know, it really takes humility to walk the walk with him and to even come here and listen to you give us the word um mm -hmm. if it's a case that we're not um humble enough to listen to you are to trust god that whatever he's saying is true and trust you to say that whatever you're getting from god you're giving to us truthfully then we're not able to come here and listen and to produce so mm -hmm. that's the main word that he wants us to you know continue or to build in the spirit of humility to carry out the word Praise God, that is it. Bless the Lord. You see, the, the training that is being administered is never training just for training. Just like people don't go to the gym just to go to the gym. There, there's a goal, there's a target, there's an expected result from going. And we find that many people will do many activities with clear understanding of what they went to do with those activities but whenever it comes on to the church and the word of god somehow they just have amnesia they just have lost a focus of what they really come to do and i know that that's not by coincidence that is the strategy of satan and those who are not very cognizant of that and alert and vigilant towards that will we become victims of that just going through the routine but uh, another day uh -huh. and the devil don't mind you wasting the days like that for the word of god say you must redeem the time for the days are evil in other words you you won't always get it like this and have the time to to receive it and to work it in so you better make good use of the time you have now to do so that when the attacker or some onslaught of the enemy comes against you you're rightly positioned to combat and to gain victory now, so yeah man that's what it's all about so we're not training just for training we're training for you to gain some some principles that will secure your victory and secure your position in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, go ahead. Hallelujah. The thing that stood out to me is the preparation mood. Mm -hmm. um, if we are not truly prepared for this, then we won't do it. And that's, that's right. what, what, it's just there before me that you have block of all, all sort. Every mm -hmm. time you come before the king or before the, 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 the leader, the person that God prepared for you to listen to, disciple you, you have a block. You are not prepared. And when you are mm -hmm. not prepared for this, that God has prepared for you, if you come before a, a, a table full of food, prepare for you, and you come full up. Well, drink, well, eat already and come. Then you won't eat. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're well filled. So that stood out to me tonight. The belief of God's word put us in a preparation mood. Yes, for what yes. the person that God has appointed for us to disciple us for the nation. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that really takes precedence in my heart tonight. Mm -hmm. And the next word is obedience. And sometimes mm -hmm. we come and we hear the word and we know we should and there are some situations that we we can do in the ministry and and in our own what god said for us and we don't do it mm. we just hear it and it's gone and so i am willing and i'm encouraging others to prepare ourselves prepare our hearts prepare our mind to go to do willing mm. obedient 
and go forth with this word because it's not going to be with us all the time. Amen. Praise God. Obedience. We are talking about children of obedience and children of disobedience. And that is really the, the application of the word that bring about the results and favors and blessings that God wants to see in your life. So we can keep on praying and wishing for the favor and the blessing. But it's not going to come just by wishing and praying and, and hoping that it comes. We have to put the word into practice. No, sir? That's how we said. We said disobedience and, and belief in the word um, attracts the opposition which is satan the curses and the wrath of god will give you scripture so that they also said it is also true that obedience and abiding in the word attracts the favor blessings and approval of god and so praise god so if we don't rightly position ourselves for it then we make ourselves pretty much an handicap in the way we respond to it Therefore, we don't get its full usefulness. We end up with something less than what was prescribed. Amen. And so we want persons to really apply their heart to the word. And really put, take it to heart. What is the kingdom of God? How does this apply to my life? How do I gain the knowledge to, of, to govern? To learn God's mean of governance and to apply those principles in my life that I can get the same results as a joint ear. And he says, anyone truly desiring to know that, they are going to get more and going to abound to abundance. Come on. But he says, anyone that lacks this thing, man, even the little that they have, is going to be taken away. Come on. So you don't want to be that latter part. <laughs> you have to get into gear then to get the results you want. You can't just hope say it not be you. You have to now get into action. Put into action what you have heard. And that you can see the power of that word manifesting in your life. Huh? Praise God. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Praise uh, God. When you were speaking on Jeremiah. Mm. Um, what I, I agree with what Sister Wallace uh, mentioned because the same thing that came to me and what you said was they were not there when mm. God spoke to Jeremiah right. and we can say we were not there when God called you, gave you the message most of us didn't know you most of them were not born as yet mm. but we have to trust that God gave you the word Amen. and as you said, God can tell some persons. He can choose to tell them by himself, but he chose to tell someone that yeah. that person will tell everybody else. So right. it comes down to what um, Mrs. Fagan said, obedience and also trust. Mm -hmm. So we have to trust not only that you are speaking words, but mm -hmm. you are speaking what God says to you. Right. And we have to trust the life because when you when you speak the word and you live the life we have two witnesses which is the mm -hmm. word and the life understand Please, so yeah. and what i what i have grown to appreciate greatly in this house since i'm here mm -hmm. and i always try to show that in even in the editing you don't say anything without the word amen so when you say it even if i don't find it right away it it it's on me and I will not rest until I find it because I know you're not going to speak mm -hmm. anything without the word. And that is mm -hmm. one thing that I really appreciate about your leadership and Praise your God. teaching because that's what Jesus did and mm -hmm. you're doing that. So I, I greatly appreciate that because some persons are speaking and we grew up hearing persons speak mm -hmm. and they, they share opinions mm -hmm. and they share things but it's, it's not grounded in truth. Mm. And oh, we, we all listen to it and we jumped and we say, yeah, this, is, this man is on fire. You understand? <laughs> but then when you come to understand the kingdom, it's not about just excitement. Mm. But it's about what the word of God says and what the word of God is doing. Because Jesus was teaching. He was not mm. going around getting people excited. No. He was teaching. And, and that is what is being done here. Praise Amen. God. Come on, give God the praise. 
the one person to know that the, we forsake all the fluff and the puff and the sugar coat and all the excess decoration and props. <laughs> you just, that's why I say, I want you to see the highlight of the word. Word, I want to see you to see elevated and not personality and charisma and giftedness but the word because if you focus your heart on the word it will yield its full results to you come on now praise god so we want more persons to do that i know there's a tendency for persons to run towards where they get the excitement and the jump and the up and the hoof but at the end of the day it's not producing fruit in their lives it even bring about more disaster and trouble for both themselves and those who are with them because the devil knows that they are not truly taking to heart the content that the word carries to them amen and so one person is to mix the word with faith and get the full result yeah huh? praise god anyone else glory to god hallelujah Good night, Apostle. Yes, um, For me, what stood out to me was when you said, when we don't understand the word, we must ask the person who is teaching us the word. Yes. And it even goes back to the scripture that says that scripture is not given for private interpretation. And a lot of times, persons put their own private interpretations and then they end up in error. That's true. Or oftentimes they ask me, what is my opinion? And <laughs> then they, they ask a whole heap of other people to hear what are their opinion. And they go on YouTube uh, and Google. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. And then they get a whole, uh, what they call it? Uh, what they call it? Eh? Collage, collage, they say. Of, of different opinions and views and then they pick out the sweet one and when well, they feel nice to them and say yeah, i think i will go with that so they, they are not really under one any one person discipling them they're pretty much discipling themselves mm. so we, we, the, i tell him that that cannot be the way of the lord they may seek to think that that's their way of how they've been doing it but that ain't god's way and that's why i said the day in turn said to jeremiah we will do it according to the date of our heart <laughs> come on now and that didn't lead to anything good for them amen in fact god then said that he would set a this device a disaster against them and you know people love to hear about if god is for us but they don't like to hear if God, what if God is not? Everybody wants to say God is for them, even the devil. Right? But, <laughs> but the, the reality is that God is not for all. Because uh, he stated that in Jeremiah 18. I will devise a device against you. And when the calamity and trouble come, I'll show you my back and not my face. So is that for you? i wouldn't think that is for you at all so you need to know your position towards him hallelujah know your position knowledge will give you the right footing and position to gain the results that you desire amen praise god yes any more yes um simone my person said thank you apostle for teaching me because my life has been transformed the yes, word Lord. we receive daily is to become the word in the flesh the word prepares us for battles, afflictions, and favor. Praise God. Yes, it does. Because the word is part of uh, what it calls the armor of God. We turn the old armor of God. They say the word is called the sword of the spirit. It is one of the weapons that are used as an offensive weapon. In other words, it's used to strike and to give harm to the enemy. All the other parts of the armor are used for defense. But that one is the only weapon used for offense to strike and to wound the enemy which is the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so that's why we are teaching the word pretty much we are teaching you how to wield this word and to do true and spiritual combat in the spiritual way and gain victory 
But if you don't know to really show the enemy, just look at you and laugh. You know, you know to really better than you will come and take it from you and, and cut you down with it. Use the same word against you. I said, didn't you say? Didn't you know the word said? Then how you do that? And you can't say didn't say that with you. Right, so you got to believe in the word and use the tools we are giving you how to wield this word. Otherwise, the enemy will come and take this word for you and use the same sword against you. Same sword and slay you. I mean, David used the sling to, to hit Goliath and hit Goliath fell down. But David then used Goliath's own sword and cut off his head. It's not this thing he used and do that. It's, it's Goliath's own sword. <laughs> so, in, in the kingdom, in spiritual warfare, the enemy can use the word against you. you know? <laughs> he can use the word too. Because it is not that he won't quote the word. But the word of God says he will not abide in it. He will not abide in it, but he will use it against you. Come on now. So that's why you need to know the word. That you can counteract his blows and his strike. That when he said to the Lord, it is written, the Lord was able to answer back. And so the Lord was able to strike back and say, it is also written. And you have to move off of that right away. Because he, he doesn't have a comeback from that. Huh? right so we have to have that kind of answer hallelujah in regard to our faith and our position in the word that will disarm the enemy and, and seize and retain our victory in the lord amen praise god anyone else praise god hallelujah you got anything out of this hope so we aim to give you as much word as we can that you can build your most faith, holy faith in the lord come on stand with me and lift those hands to the lord let us pray hallelujah father we just thank you for your anointing and for your grace upon our lives we know that it's you that called us and have foreknew us and have called and predestined us to be conformed to the image of your son and we embrace your anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden to bring us in the fullness of the presence and power and spirit of your son living in us both to will and to do your perfect will O oh god to will and to do your good pleasure and so i pray that grace will be released to your people right now whatever the enemy has been stalking and tormenting and and hounded them on that your word will rise up in their spirit and answer hallelujah and that faith will arise and overcome every hurdle every demonic attack every demonic statement and feeling and thoughts and imagination and views that exalt itself against your knowledge you bring it into captivity and into obedience to christ right now you release your your anointing and power and presence in the room to flood and to expel and to reject and to overthrow all the works of satan that indeed your people will stand tall and declare the lord reigns let the people rejoice let the earth rejoice let the all that year know god that you reign upon the land upon the sea you reign in the heavens and the earth all power belongs to you and as joint ears seated in christ we share in that power hallelujah for that you have given us your divine powers given us everything we need for life and godliness in christ and so we embrace that anointing right now we command every sickness and every disease to be melted out of the body right now every disorder and dysfunction to be expelled everything the enemy touched marred corrupted defiled reverse its effects now lord in the name of jesus we chop down the enemy we expose expose him to the sword of the spirit now we expose him to the blade of your word and we say cut through every every divisive word cut through 
every cloak, every armor in which he trusts, pierce my God and run him through with his sword of the spirit now and leave him defenseless against us right now. Let him melt away and become like the chaff that the wind drive it away right now in the name of Jesus. Cover us under your blood, clothe us with your righteousness and with your glory and fill us with your love because perfect love dissolve all fears and we thank you and claim the victory and give you the glory in Jesus' name come on give him the praise right now give God the glory and the praise hallelujah glory to God hallelujah glory to God Hallelujah, Raboshi Basetu. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega. We cast every care upon you. And we embrace your anointing to keep and to seal us from victory unto victory. From glory to glory, from strength to strength and from faith to faith in jesus name come on give him the praise right now hallelujah, hallelujah. give you a chance to sow before we release you praise god hallelujah praise god and believe that as you do so we we'll give the final word to those who are watching online praise god for those who are watching online you're watching increasing faith Praise God. You're watching Increase in Faith, Deliverance Ministry International. We are here at 3 East Street, Montego, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. I want you to know the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And God wants you to know much more than what is, that meets the eye, than what is obvious to you. That's why he wants you to look a little deeper. That's why he wants you to listen more intently, pay closer attention. To what the Lord is this person and releasing through the revelation of his son and through his Holy Spirit in the earth. And he wants you to be participant in that. Hallelujah. Not just observance, but hallelujah, participant in the anointing and grace and favor is releasing through Christ. And that all comes through the kingdom of God. And so we want persons to know more the gospel that Jesus preached. We have a book out there called The Gospel of the Kingdom. The gospel that Jesus preached. You can order it on Amazon.com. Go on Amazon.com and look in the search box. Type in Richard V. Fagan and you see the book pop up. Hallelujah. The gospel of the kingdom. The gospel that Jesus preached. Uh, we've taken some scriptures from the gospel and placed them together more closely that you can follow the theme and teaching of Jesus. All the things are not there in that one book, but we lay the foundational principles there. For you to gain a, a foundational understanding of the gospel of the kingdom and build on it to have a richer faith and relationship and fellowship with the Lord through his son Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. So we encourage you to press on in the word. You can order it online or download it through Kindle. Or if you want to see more of the teachings, you can also contact us, connect with us on Facebook. Look for Richard Fagan and send a friend's request and he'll be plugged into the live stream. We have five live stream services per week. Hallelujah. And they're all streamed on Facebook. So you can look for Richard Fagan and just check, just connect and he'll of course plug into the live streams there. You can also see the recordings on our YouTube channel. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel, Richard Fagan, and you'll see more teachings also there same recordings that are streamed are placed there but we add some more scriptures for content for persons who want to search scriptures with scriptures to make their notes and to build their faith we have made that accommodation for you on the youtube version of the teachings praise god you can also look for us on our website it's increasing faith intl.org that's increasing faith intl org those who want to send a prayer request can send so on the website in the comment box your prayer requests or your faith report of how the ministry been blessing you we follow up on it to pray over you and to see much results manifest in your life also those who desire to sow to the ministry 
you can so through the website the information is there on the front page at the bottom options are there available to you if any other questions you can call me richard fagan at 876-839-9390 or 876-557-2427 looking forward to bless you and to enlarge your faith in the lord as we walk by faith and not by sight in Jesus' name amen were you blessed tonight praise god good to have you and good to share the word with you one more time it's my privilege to do so lift those hands to the lord let me release you in Jesus' name father we thank you for your word and your anointing and your holy spirit that led us into deeper understanding of your truth the mysteries of your kingdom being unfolded to us as ears of you and joint ears with christ that we will know hallelujah the full riches of the inheritance we have in the saints and we thank you for what you are unveiling to us and still yet to unveil even more as we walk by faith and not by sight we claim those benefits and by the leading of your holy spirit we know will lead us in the fullness of all things as we comply and submit to his leadership in our lives we give it a praise and the glory in jesus name amen amen may the lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord live up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great night. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.